So what I'm going to do in this video is uh, work on lab <coughs> lab four, and uh, in particular, I'm going to uh, uh, solve this problem uh, P three twenty six. And uh, to get started on doing that, now as you can see that uh, P326 is a graphics program because it includes these these graphics files. Uh, so let's um, and I'm going to do this on um, on Visual Studio in Windows. I'll go to my notes. I'll get the Hello Graphics program Windows version. and uh, just copy this I created a project already make sure that when you create a project that you in, <coughs> in Visual Studios is that you go into properties I look at the properties window and under um, under general and character set the the default setting this is not coming up on me here there it is the default setting is to use the Unicode character set. That should be changed to not set. So that's important. The other issue is if the build is not working correctly, you might <coughs> want to check the following as well under linker and then system the subsystem should be Windows and uh, slash subsystem windows like this. If you had created a console application, um, you would find that this is would be the following setting. If that's the case, make sure you set that so that it looks like this. Uh, so this tells the compiler that we're we want to build our program so that it runs within an application window. All right, I'll just save this. Let's um, let's see if we um, can build. Looks good. And a run. There's the dot. Okay. Now, if you look at the problem, it's asking for a ten horizontal streets and ten vertical streets. So let's go ahead and do that. So what I'll do is uh, create um, two points, A and B. That um, and the, we'll draw a line from A to B. So we're going to initialize this. This A and B looks like this. So B is, um, let's start, you know what, let's see, let's put the line in the middle. Let's just see if we can do this. Uh, let's create a line made from A and B. And <coughs> then we'll output the line. There's a line in the middle. And uh, let's move that so it starts at 10. Maybe we won't be able to see that. There's the line all the way at the top there. All right. So we need 10 of these lines. Let's see, 10 streets horizontally, 10 streets vertically. 
actually the the grid goes uh, has a height the y maximum y value is 10 the minimum y value is minus 10 that means that um, each street although all the streets taken together will have a height of 20 units so 10 streets must have each have a height of two units so let's do so we let's let's uh, let's go into a loop here so we want 10 streets so that means we know exactly how many times to to draw a line which would be 10 times Here's a loop that uh, runs exactly 10 times. So we start counting at zero. And uh, we stop when we hit 10. So we continue counting as long as we're less than 10. And uh, so each time we draw the line, we'll try to move the line. Let's see, dx will be 0 and dy will be minus 2, so 2 units at each time. Alright, let's take a look at this. There's our 10 streets horizontal streets, now we need to do the same thing. For the <coughs> vertical streets, so let me call this the um, the H line, horizontal lines. This is the horizontal line, and uh, let's create. Actually, I'll do it like this just to make things more um, compact the horizontal line, and this is the syntax for that by the way the horizontal line will start will go from minus 10 to 10 I'm sorry, minus 10, 10 to 10, 10 now we can eliminate this variables A and B. Here's the horizontal line. And uh, we need to change that as well. Okay, we have the same result that runs. Now let's create a vertical line. And the um, here's the uh, vertical line, and it'll start in the same upper. This is the upper left-hand corner, and now we need to go down to the m lower left-hand corner, which will be sorry, x is minus ten. Looks like that. Let's go ahead and. Um, and this vertical line needs to move to the right so this would be um, this would be positive 2 and 0 we don't want to move in the y direction doesn't look good oh we forgot to output it So let's go ahead and uh, render that line. Okay, we have the grid. Okay, <coughs> now what we need to do is um, is plot the position of a drunkard and uh, we'll start in the center of the grid 
and then have the drunkard take um, a random step either to the left to the right or up or down and they do and we'll do this 100 times let's take a look at that let's create a point call it drunkard and it will start at zero zero and uh, i we'll do something, so it's going to be a loop. And the loop will run 100 times exactly. So I'm using the same pattern that I used for the previous um, code. Actually, let's, let's create the drunkard out of the loop. and uh, output here a hundred times we won't move it we'll just do it let's just see the dot it'll stay in the center all right so the center is here And um, inside the loop, what we need to do is uh, make a, a random step. So let's take a look at that. So we have um, so so we want to take a random step either up, down, or is it east, west, north, or south? So we have to figure out how to do that. Let's see. So we need a random value. So that's the first thing. Let's let's just start with generating a random value, and uh, it will look like uh, this. To get a random value, uh, we need a function, something like rand. Let's take a look. So we have a function. Call it rand. I mean that's what that's its name actually rand and uh, I can't remember how do we get a random value so what I'll do here how do we find a random value a C++ random function yeah I can I'm looking it up in the book here but you know what it's a lot faster just to use um, Google or other search engine. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, so it'll be C++ uh, random value rand here it is srand is used to seed the random number and uh, yeah there it is just rand that's what we had. So Rand and see Rand returns an int, and it returns an int between zero and Rand max. So we'll do this. We'll take our a random integer. Say we'll call it um, R. And um, the rand is between zero and rand. Well, let's do it like this. If we just just to show, trying to illustrate what this uh, what this function does. Let's go ahead and uh, print that. Uh, see out is not listed here. Let's. Um, I don't even remember if we get a. Let's. Uh, sorry, that's a mistake. Let's go ahead and um, output those numbers. So we'll need to include uh, IO stream. And 
and uh, look down here. Where is the, uh, here's the output. See nothing written to, um, there it is. Nothing written to the, um, to the output stream. Let's see, so the standard output, let's see out. Let's take a look here. I don't see where this is happening. Oh, you know what? It looks like we're returning um, too quickly, perhaps. Let's see if I can uh, slow that up. Kill the function, run it again. Still nothing. Hmm. Some messages there that I might want to read later on. How do I get the standard output? So I want to write to the console, but um, that doesn't seem to be working on me. So let's think of another way to do this. Let's, uh, I'll set a breakpoint here. So R is nothing right now. I need to step. Actually, that's too... Uh, we can't read it there. I'll just do R equals R. Put the breakpoint there. Run. Now let's see the value of R is 41. I step. Actually, I'm going to just press F5 to run to the next breakpoint. 18,467. Press F5. 6,334. F5. 26,000. So it's a large integer. That's my point. And um, so we can see what the value of R is. So what we, what we want to do is um, is mod this by something called random max. That's an underscore. And that random max is defined as um, using hexadecimal notation, as you can see here, zero x. 7 FFF, that's hexadecimal notation that represents the largest um, random integer that's returned by RAND. No, this is not what I want to do. That was uh, dumb. Actually, I need to divide by 4 and get the remainder. So, RAND divided by 4 discarding the value and keeping the remainder, I'll get uh, a number between 0 and 3 inclusive. So we can, um, we can check that actually. I'll do the same trick here. I'll put a breakpoint there. Here, R is 1. F5, R is 3, F5. You can see the, <coughs> the value of R each time I step. The value of R is, uh, is between 0 and um, 3. There's a 0. 
and there's a one, there's a one, so on. Okay, stop that. So now we can have a conditional that looks at that value. So if we do something like if if r is zero, and let's say st step north. <coughs> and um, else, if r is um, is one, say step doesn't matter which direction, just has to be one of them. Step south. And if R is um, is two or three, so we'll step um, east and step uh, west. Just see if it builds. Looks okay. So stepping north would be something like this: the drunkard would uh, move uh, one step up. So zero in the x direction, one in the y direction. Similarly for the other um, directions. Step east, that's to the right. West, that's to the left. So that's the walk. It's nice to get an animation. This this is everything all at once. So what I'd like to do is put in a little pause here. And uh, I'm going to show you a trick that works in uh, Linux and uh, Windows. And I assume it works on Macintosh as well. I'm just going to run a little loop here. Start at k equals zero, and uh, we're going to go to uh, some large number, say 100. That's not that large, and then uh, add add k. So we're going to run. Um, we're going to call uh, repaint. Hmm. I think I can pass in nothing there. Repaint doesn't take zero arguments. Let's see, this is a paint struct. <laughs> hmm. Let me see what else I can do. I think that repaint takes zero arguments on uh, when you build under Linux. Let's take a look here. This is, uh, see actually on Windows we don't have to do anything. This is repaint. So on Linux, this will be repaint. This is a paint struct ampersand p as a paint struct. Let's do this. <coughs> we just pass in this this dummy uh, argument. Everything goes really quickly there, doesn't it? Let's put a let's put a thousand in here. See if we can see some difference. Hmm. Am I getting a build? Yeah. Just flashes up there. I don't get it. Why is this? Um, going so uh, slow that number's getting too big there we go we get a little bit of I look at all of those that's an awful lot of calls and uh, 
So, you know, int. What is the largest int? I'm not even sure what it is. This is a hundred thousand, so we can I'm sure we can get a million out of that. So here's here's what we do this loop a million times. We call repaint a million times just to sh slow things up. Look at that. It shows you how the how the drunkard is is walking. And uh, let's let's slow it up a little more. Now this will be different on different systems. So we see the progression of the of the drunkard. This is called a random walk. I think we get we get exactly the same walk each time. Look, see this these two things here, and that. let's see the the pattern is the same each time. Well, let's do it like this. Just take a couple zeros off, just to just run it over and over again here. See that pattern? It's exactly the same each time. And the problem is um, this function RAND is returning exactly the same sequence of random numbers each time. So we need to uh, we need to do something called seeding the random number generator. We use SRAND to do that. So we got to pass in some random value. And normally the trick is to um, to pass in the number of seconds. We do that by calling time. And let's see, time is in a header file. <coughs> I don't know which one it's in actually. Is it something called time? Let me see. Where is time? Uh, no, I think is it C time? I, I can't remember this. Let's try that. That's not it. No overloaded function. I'll we'll have to use Google again. And uh, actually, here's the C library. Let's look for a function called um, time. Actually, here's an here is a, an example. And I'm sure they see the random number. Oh, there it is, right there. It's actually it takes a takes a null or a zero. I forgot to do that. So time is um, uh, takes a zero here. Let's see if we get it this time. Ah, look at that. That worked. So if I include C time, let me just take C time out and watch it, watch the build fail. There it is. So time not found. C time has got it. And uh, what what in fact does does time uh, return? Let's let's take a look at that. Um, where am I calling? There it is. I don't know. Go to the declaration. Does it get any annotation there? Doesn't say anything. That's the header file we just jumped into. So there's no. Um, nothing on that. Let's look at S... Uh, no, we need time. I have to find time. Let's see if that's uh, any um, any explanation of, of time. I think it returns a number of seconds uh, from some epic, you know, like 1970 or something like that. So I'll do this. Let's look at that. C++ uh, time function. C time, there it is, time dot h. And uh, this is a function, get the current time. Get the current calendar time. It takes a, a timer. It's a pointer to a time t. We pass in zero, so we pass in as a pointer to called a null pointer. There it is. It, it's the number of sec or what is it? Number of hours? Hmm. No, it's number of seconds. 
It's a number of seconds since January 1, 1970. Okay, let's, um, now that we're doing this, let's see that we in fact get a, a different pattern each time we run it. Now you'll see we're getting a very different pattern. Seems to be going down. It won't go down forever. So that one he didn't go very far. Here he's going up. So we get a different pattern each time. Just to make it more pleasing, let's add a few zeros here. And uh, to get more um, delay. Maybe that's too slow for me now. Kill that. I'll cut the time in half. Once again, this is platform dependent. Depends on also depends on what else is going on, on in your machine. This, um, so here we go off the edge and we come back again. That's it. And it's optional. Um, you don't need to um, to include this these lines right here. Uh, these are in fact um, optional. The code runs fine without those. It's just if you wanted to have a uh, an animation that you could look at, uh, you can include those lines. Looks like. We're getting a different pattern each time, but you should be seeding the random number generator. And you can do that by calling time, getting the number of seconds. All right, that's it for, um, that's it for the problem. Here it is. This is the lab that I want you to be working on. Oops, sorry.